So along with their review samples of the Ryzen Threadripper 1950X, AMD sent to, uh, looks like 250 publications, one of the coolest pieces of swag of all time. This right here in a custom acrylic magnetic case is a vanity Ryzen Threadripper with an engraving of the name of the publication. So in our case, that's Linus Tech Tips on the integrated heat spreader. There's only one small problem. This doesn't work. So today's objective is to remove the vanity spreader from this one and put it back together with a working 1950X. Sennheiser's PXC 550 wireless headphones feature up to 30 hours of battery life, noise guard, hybrid adaptive noise cancellation, and more. Check them out at the link below. So for our experiment, we're gonna need a few things. The vanity processor, a working processor with the carrier plate. Uh, we're gonna need a Threadripper compatible cooler uh, when we fire it up to find out if it still works. So we're gonna use an NHU14 STR4 SP3 from Noctua. We're gonna need a Threadripper board. So we've got an ROG Zenith Extreme. And finally, this piece of beautiful artwork from Der Bauer. Or Der Bauer? Okay, look, my, my German's not that good. This is the one prototype that I'm aware of of a Threadripper delitting tool. I'm also gonna need one of these. Because the integrated heat spreader is soldered, we are gonna have to melt the solder in order to remove it. All right, so let's put this baby on here. Number 39 of 250. You know, I probably wouldn't be willing to, uh, to do this to it if AMD had given me the number one that I deserve instead of number 39. I wonder who got number one. Where are the heating elements? You know what, yeah, let's... Uh... Fine, let's just put it here. So, we want to throw this in uh, because we don't really want to reach exactly 355. We want to get a little lower than that, about 15 degrees Celsius less than that. That's when the solder on the CPU is actually going to melt and that's when we're going to be able to pop it off. Ah, hold on, wait. I just thought of something. There's fingerprints on the CPU right now. I don't know if these gloves are gonna be good enough, but it shouldn't be that hot yet. If we bake this thing now, it's probably gonna like bake them onto it because of the grease and the oils. Shoot. Ah, ah. Okay. Perfect. Okay, I heard a little noise, um, but I'm not 100% sure what it means. Unfortunately, this oven doesn't have a readout for what the actual temperature is inside. It's possible that it's about 100 degrees Celsius right now. Uh, what the crap? No. It's also possible that it's 250. Uh-oh. Wait, what? What temperature did I want it at? Okay, we might have thoroughly f***ed this thing. Oh, this is Fahrenheit. Hold on. How could it possibly be? <gasps> oh, because of the heating elements right above it, the radiant heat. Okay, well, it's do or die time with this. Is this gonna melt? Not if we move fast enough. Oh, this is making me nervous. Go! Oh my God. Look at the way it's mashing the uh, PCB there. Oh wow, this is the uh, be all and end all of failed experiments right now. Yeah, I don't think it shifted it one bit. Okay, so new developments. We broke off the screws, over tightening it last time. Sheared them right off. I drilled them out. I put new ones in. Those ones sheared off while I was trying to put them in because I didn't have quite the right threading. Blah, blah, blah. So we've got a new system. I grabbed some leftover pieces of 16K gaming. Cool, we are just gonna like self tap the shit out of this. Okay. Sweet. Let's give it the full heat. Um, so we may have to wait another five or 10 minutes or so. There it is. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. Okay. Oh, oh, look at that. 
Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, why did I just drop that? That was the good side. Ah! Okay. So here's our dummy chip. So I want to get the hunks off quickly while it's still soft here. Remember guys, there's nothing to damage here. We're just practicing. This is pure practice. What do you think, Pella? Should I do it? Should I risk a thousand dollar processor? I mean, you only live once, right? This is it. The real chip goes in now. While I'm waiting for that, actually, I can uh, work on my technique for removing the silicone glue. I really like what AMD's done. They've put um, like a, some kind of glue or resin or something over all of these inner uh, surface mount components here. It means that if you slip a little bit, you're very unlikely to knock one off. I've done that. You know what? That's a lot of pressure I'm putting on it right now. Come on, you vicious bastard. Oh, there it is, there it is. Theoretically working chip. Okay, so now, come on, come up. Now is the optimal time to get that off. But I also don't want to spill it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it upside down. Oh, wow, as soon as I touch it, it solidifies. Oh, no, that one came off clean. See, see how easy they come off while it's nice and uh, warm? Especially if it's not dead, which there's a good chance it's not. So here's kind of a funny idea. I see diamond thermal compound is well known to be fairly abrasive, so I won't be using it on the top of the IHS, but check this out. <laughs> Look how much it shined up that die, just like that. It's like two seconds. So it takes off this, uh, it takes off this solder like nobody's business. I uh, don't know which way this goes on. So that's a thing. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter. <gasps> Wait, wait, wait. Well, I put a little more pressure on it than I wanted. We are YOLOing this. No, I wouldn't recommend this. Yes, I'm doing it anyway. Okay, we're getting to the point now where if I accidentally slip with it, it'll lose the IHS. So I forgot about this stage, which means there's some drying time involved. Let me just find out how long that takes to dry. This is actually a broken carrier, but I can't find our replacement one, so yo -ho. Please don't slip. If you ask it nicely, it won't slip. Hey! It slipped. Okay. Carrier frame is... Well, as long as we get the CPU down. It doesn't really matter that the carrier frame is kind of bar. I don't think. Oh, moment of truth, man. Moment of truth. Does it work? Does the vanity CPU work? I don't remember the application method for Threadripper, so we're gonna do it. Oh, what a mess. Oh, terrible. CPU fan. Ah. Here we go. Memory, CPU. It's still on CPU. Oh, it's still on CPU. Oh, it's updating. No, shut up, not now. Oh, this is not a good sign. Code zero D, post error. Okay, so what's code zero D? It's like the one thing that I could possibly want in a motherboard manual. Postcode zero D on Rampage Extreme, blah, blah, blah. Disable ASM storage op -ROM. Yeah, no, I really don't think that's gonna help me. One thing is that I only have one eight pin CPU connector plugged in and it is recommended to have two for Threadripper. Shoot, that is not a good sign. Okay, why were we getting further before? I forgot to plug in the HDMI connector. Zero D, post error. Whoa, 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 whoa! Ho, ho! No way! It's up! 32 gigs RAM detected! It's up! The vanity CPU works! You have got to be freaking kidding me! Oh, man! 
Okay, so with the OS loaded, I'm gonna wait for it to reach equilibrium while I tell you guys about FreshBooks. FreshBooks is the accounting solution for small business owners and freelancers. It allows you to get organized, get paid faster, send professional looking invoices to your customers in just a matter of seconds, and take all the functionality of FreshBooks' cloud-based accounting solution with you on the go. They've got apps available for iOS and Android, and it can do all kinds of great stuff for you while you're out and about. You can track your receipts, you can log your hours, and in general, FreshBooks is just about spending less time fussing about with complicated accounting software and more time doing the work that actually makes you money. They've got fantastic customer support as well. You just call FreshBooks, speak to a person, and they will walk you through things. Freaking unbelievable. So head over to freshbooks.com slash tech tips. We've got that linked below and enter Linus Tech Tips in the How You Heard About Us section. You can try it out for free to see if you like it. So thanks for watching, guys. This is actually incredible. Even though the idle temps were like 55, there's like 60, load temps are 72 and it's really leveled out there. So it works and it like, works. Anyway, if you dislike this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Get your own 1950X, even though it won't have, you know, laser etched Linus Tech Tips on it. Uh, also linked in the description is our t-shirt store, which has cool shirts like this one, as well as our community forum, which you should totally join.